Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are tuned into the Vitamin D Podcast, and I am your host, Dawn Day, here to help you get excited about your life. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Vitamin D is all about shedding light on the good and the bad. Here, we explore the ways in which you can live your life on purpose and for a purpose, but it's going to cause you to be authentic. It's going to challenge you to be vulnerable. It's going to require you to tap into the true you. While sometimes I'll go ahead and interview and have great conversations with celebrities and people like you and me, and then there are times that I take in an email back. Yeah, where listeners write in for advice about love, relationships, career, purpose, anything that fancies their mind. And I share my thoughts on them. Some you may not agree with. But things that I call as looking deeper, deeper within, to understanding that you are the change agent and are the reason whether or not you are living your best life. Now, I'm going to tell you now, I've said it before, and I'll say this again as well. I'm an Aries, so I'm going to give it to you all. I hold no punches because we don't have time to waste. I don't want to come at you inauthentic to have you thinking that I'm trying to shield you from truth. Remember, when we talk about vitamin D, it's shedding the light that's on the good and the bad. And it doesn't ask permission. So it's time to dive in. So without further ado, let's get started and let's get ready for your dose or doses of vitamin D. Get your vitamin D right here get excited about your life. All right. So we are in the first letter pulled out the email bag. I want to give a special thanks to my uh, producer, my assistant, my everything, um, Ian, Ian Kirksey for getting all this together. So let's see what he grabbed up. So here's the first one. Subject, help negative spiral. Dear Dawn, I sucked in high school and I thought I achieved something by graduating just because my best friends all dropped out. Then I dropped out of community college because I didn't know what I wanted to do and couldn't find the motivation or keep myself from procrastinating, which is a common theme in my life. Now at 26, I work 40 to 44 hours a week for Amazon. I'm overweight and constantly hear, oh, you look like you lost weight, which is the last thing I want to hear when I don't see it. And I still live with my mother. Then the only thing in my life I enjoy is trying to make funny content online, but I can't stay consistent with that because my only quality that anyone cares about is that I'm funny. So I'm afraid someone I know in real life will find them and think it's lame. And then I will lose more confidence and won't have any more qualities, which means I'd have nothing positive to think about myself. How can I get out of this negative spiral? Well, first, let me say thank you for writing in. I appreciate you being vulnerable. You know, it takes a lot of guts to um, write in as your authentic self and then admit of some things that you want to work on to get better. But the fact that you're stepping forward, let's step into the light. You know, the first thing I heard, um, because I always correlate things with music, which is how vitamin D started out. I heard Biggie in my ear. I chose the life I live. I went from negative to positive. That's the first thing that came to my mind. And I say that because you're almost like the rose that grew from the concrete. Heck, some may even say you're that coal that transformed into that diamond. But here's the thing. The thing when we talk about the rose that, you know, outgrew its circumstances or that diamond that actually, or that piece of coal that transformed with all that pressure and all those cuts is that they decided to step into the light. Have you heard the song? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, how are you going to shine and get out of this negative spiral when I hear Lauren Hill chiming in? How are you going to win when you ain't right within? How can I say this? Well, let's look at it. You said that you can't find the motivation within yourself. And you can't stop that from keeping you from being procrastinating, which is a common theme. How you do anything is how you'll do everything. You said that you're overweight. And the last thing you want to hear, people saying, oh, you look like you lost weight. Come on now. So now you're carrying on excess baggage. And when people are around you trying to speak life into you, you're shielding it away. 
Now, see, my name is Dawn Day, and I tell all people all the time I speak like, heck, I even have life tattooed in my mouth. But now I have to charge you that it's time for you to speak life over yourself. But this is what you have to ask yourself. What do you want out of your life? You have to name it and decree it over your life. And you have to understand that this is a decision that only you can make. You said, the only thing in my life I enjoy is trying to make funny content online. Then do it. Then you said, well, it's the only quality that anyone cares about. And if they find that you're a lame, what does it matter? Why do you care about what other people think? When I even told you to quote about Biggie, I chose the life I live. I went from negative to positive. It's important that in life, everything is like a yin and the yang. You can't have darkness without light and vice versa. But you have the reasoning and you have the ability to choose how you want to live. Well, we know life is nothing but an energy source. That's what ignites us. That is that little light of mine that I'm going to let it shine. Well, are you going to lead it in a positive direction? Or are you going to lead it into a negative direction? Again, that's what you have to choose. And you have to ask yourself, what do I want? And it's not thinking about what other people are going to consider or what other people are going to make. Because at the end of the day, when you have to go to bed at night, when you close your eyes, the only one residing in you is you. So what say you? Because if you keep trying to go outside to find fulfillment within, you'll see that it's never enough. Remember, we're all about giving from our overflow. And see, when we have things that cause us a restraint, that cause us different knots in our body, and we try, are constantly trying to fill things up. See, you in the situation of even wondering if someone is going to think that you're lame is inviting things to come inside of you and understanding you only have capacity for you. So you came on this earth not to hoard and to gather emotions and to grab the feelings of everyone else. You came to live your best life and shine to be authentic who it is that you are. Now you came in and you said, hey, my best friends, they all dropped out. I decided to go to school. Then when I did it, I went on to community college and found out I had to drop out. Now you find yourself, fast forward, hmm, umpteen years later, you're 26. And now you're working 40 to 44 hours a week. You're overweight, so probably you're stressed out. And see, even not only your mind is stressed out, but now your body is having stressed out. So much so because of all this tension, this restriction, you can't let light come in. How do we see this in the letter? Well, you said that people are looking at you, speaking life and say, oh, wow, you lost weight. But guess what? Because you're hoarding on to so many feelings, so many emotions, you can't allow things to be received to you to be reflected out of you. Do you follow what I'm saying? You said that you are afraid that you will lose more confidence. Well, it sounds like you have to practice on acquiring the confidence. It's confidence that resides inside of you. So in order to do that, I challenge you to start speaking life over yourself. It's time. You're going to have to look in the mirror and encourage yourself. Heck, if you think I'm kidding, if you go in the mirror right now, right? Look at yourself. And look at your ear. Look at the formation of it, right? It has all these coils, these vibrations, this energy source that we put out, right? And it's important that you realize that your ears are like an embryo. What you put inside of them, that's where things start to grow. But aha, here's the thing that you must remember. Between those two ears is, guess what? The most powerful mechanism on your body where you only are using a finite percent, a very small percentage. It's called your brain. So I'm here to say the life that you can speak outside of your mouth, the reality that you choose to create and you get up and if you want to be somebody, you want to go somewhere, you're starting to wake up and pay attention to yourself. Speak over it. Allow it to manifest and to grow in your ears. And I promise you, You'll step in the life that you truly deserve. So don't be afraid of living your best life. Don't be afraid of loving you and continue to know that if you need support, you need help, seek it out and get those resources because you deserve that. Remember, it's up to you to choose the life that you want to live. Is it going to be negative or positive? All right, let's go on to the next letter. Subject, anxiety is ruining my relationship. Dear Dawn, 
Most of the spats between my partner and I are because I don't have a license yet. Only a permit, but I'm too scared to drive due to my lack of experience and confidence. Granted, I'm 29, but I'm also from New York. It's not that big of a deal here since we moved from Ithaca, though I get huge amounts of anxiety when I think about having to drive because I feel like I'll mess up or someone will hit me and it terrifies me. I feel like a total failure because I don't drive myself around and I'm totally dependent on my partner to drive me here and there. And I'm sure you can imagine how annoying that must be for him. I have a newborn and an 18-month-old, and I really need to be able to drive them to their appointments and be able to take care of my own errands. I'm just so scared to just put my babies in the car and start driving. How can I overcome this? You can, first of all, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to choose. What do you want? You know, there's a saying that says, um, how you do anything is definitely how you will do everything. And when you step up to this plate, are you going to strike out and swing or maybe a swing and hit? It's up to you. You know, on a previous episode, I spoke with a young woman and I've been talking about her a lot recently, which means she definitely left a great impression. Um, Karen Righteous Soul Malone. And she had a great analogy that I just feel like it applies to me right now in my life and so many things that we may look like or say that we fear that causes anxiety, that causes us to freeze. And she said, you can't keep running. At some point, whatever this thing, this relationship, this fear of driving, this fear of love, this fear of success, that's the mountain. And at one point, do you stop heading towards the mountain and turning around. And now some people say, oh, I don't want to have time to deal with that foolishness. But then you have to ask yourself, how are you going to get to the other side? And here's the thing that's important to realize too. As she was talking about this mountain and even going up the mountain, she said, sometimes you're going to have to pause. AKA, take your time. AKA get your bearings, AKA see what's going on, AKA breathe, peace be still. See what happens when we're overloaded with so much anxiety, it's all about confusion. It's noise, it's distraction. But just like I spoke on the previous letter and we talk about finding the light within, it's all within. But if you're so busy looking without, you can't get within. So take time with yourself. And you have to realize that you can't keep running from things. If you keep allowing things to run your life, those other things will run your life for you. So you can make all the excuses that you want and say lack of experience, but hey, faith without works is dead. Did you think that it was going to show up and everything was going to appear with that confidence? No. So are you going to live your life in fear? Because remember, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. And you said right here, you have a newborn and an 18-month-old. Do you want to instill fear on them? You know, I think that's one of the powerful things that we can do as a parent. Um, whether that be a a biological child or some sort of mentor. And it's to be that beacon of strength, that courage, that light to say, I've been through this and now I'm on the other side. So I want you to get to the idea and entertaining the notion of you living your best life. And that means believing in yourself. If you can almost change believing to be live, to be living, to be in yourself, you realize that you are all that you need. So you can make up all these excuses about lack of experience, but the bottom line is that you're afraid. Are you ready to take control of your life? It's time for you to get in that driver's seat, literally, and drive your life on the ride of your wildest dreams. Because at some point, you're going to realize this is going to be taxing on your relationship. You know, you actually are losing a sense of your freedom because you are allowing something to captivate you. How dare you? How dare you come on to the Vitamin D podcast and walk in the realms of talking about living your best life. And here you are locked up in handcuffs and you've swallowed the key. Is that an insult to you or me? 
If you think about it, any time that we have a lack of confidence to self, that's an insult to self and everyone that believes in us. I don't know about you, but whoever I'm with or who's ever an extension of me, I want to edify each other. I don't want to have to shun any light. I don't want to have any situation when I'm holding you down. I just want to reflect abundance. And that's confidence. And sometimes that confidence even looks like, hey, I'm scared, but I'm open. So how can you get over this bout? How can you overcome this? Girl, put yourself in that car and put the pedal to the metal. Buckle up. Take it slow. But don't stop the ride. Because who knows? This very ride, and I mean a pun intended, could be the very way of you to live your best life. You better look fear in the face and say, you ain't got nothing on me. All right. Next letter. Subject, feeling a little lost. Dear Dawn, So I'm 32, decent job, I live in a small town in the Midwest, I have a good amount of savings, a relationship that could be healthier, she thinks I don't emote enough and I think I do it just fine, but I feel comfortable and things are good sometimes. Really, I feel like I've devolved into working, barely maintaining social contacts and watching shows in my free time. Could be the pandemic, but I also feel like this could last longer. I feel unfulfilled and alone. How do I start living? I can see how you feel lost because it sounds like you don't know if you're coming or going. What do I mean? Okay, well, you say you feel comfortable and things are good. But then going down to only a few sentences later, you say, but then you feel unfulfilled. You know, you said you're alone, but you have someone in the house that's calling out for you. You said, I feel comfortable and things are good, but for who? I'm not saying that everything is horrible, but I'm looking in this letter and it's saying, hey, everything is decent. It's a small town. It's average. Where is the spark? Where is the spectacularness of it? Your girlfriend is there. You have someone around you who is actually pushing you and wants you to be your very best just by simply communication. But I can see because if you're feeling a little lost, I see how the communication between yourself may be distorted. So if that's distorted, how can you communicate with her? It seems as though that as she's trying to call out to you, you can't even hear or see her. But there's a song I thought about. Indy Ari said it. She said, there's hope. It doesn't cost a thing to smile. You don't have to pay to laugh. And you better thank God for that. It's time for you to look, listen, and just take inventory of everything around you. And and, and you don't have to tell me, but tell yourself, what do you see? And be honest. I said it before. I said it again. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to say it later on. Vitamin D is all about shedding the light. So I don't want you to take this view and look around and how you're saying, oh, everything's all good and I am comfortable. No, because you feel unfulfilled. You said you feel lonely. So tell me, what do you see? What do you truly see? And I can see that it's not about you just only seeing things that are bad because you say that you are in a relationship and you can see the fact that somebody is yearning out for you. So you see, although this is not necessarily in a totally good situation, you have someone who is still choosing to show up and to be there. But they're waiting for you to show up because if you aren't communicating with them, they can't even help you for what it needs and understanding you're in this relationship or a partnership, right? There is a requirement on both ends. And I think it first starts out with communication because one needs to know what they're signing up to be in. So when you talk about this whole thing of not feeling fulfilled, then you have to really answer this question. Are you truly comfortable and are you truly good? Because if we don't get to that, there's nothing for us to build upon because the foundation is shaky. And see, that's what happens when we're inconsistent with our truth. But if we have grace to realize that the only way to seek truth is to sit with self to see truth, hence I, I is not only to represent who myself, I is what I see outside. So what am I seeing with self? What are you seeing with yourself? Here's the thing. It's one thing to stand on unleveled concrete and know it. It's another to run and fall. You dig what I'm saying? 
See, that's kind of like, if you look at it, that's what fear does. Remember, fear is the uh, false evidence of being real. Fear is the illusion. Fear is the mindset that there is something that actually is not there, but you are constructing it to be there. So, and sometimes this fear is a manipulation with self. We're not honest with self. So what happens is, is that we're creating this false reality. We're creating something that is not true, that we are exuding as if this is life. And then we allow it to control ourselves. So in this moment of you saying, oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm comfortable. Now you've created this false reality box so much. So you so good, your girl is trying to talk to you and tell you what you need and you can't hear her. Hence, it has a ripple effect on you. Hence, why you're in the house and you're feeling lonely. It goes back to what I've been saying all the time. How you gonna win when you ain't right within? Come again. But guess what? Despite what you're going through, and I say that to every person, no matter how raw and and rugged it is, When you decided to show up for yourself, you've given yourself grace to say that there's hope. There's a reason for change. Remember, a car doesn't start until the engine is ignited, right? You have to push your key. You have to press the button. You have to push something to ignite it, just like a match. You have to strike it. It's time for you to strike in on your life. Strike in so you can illuminate that light. How about that? I like that one better. Light your match. Allow your light to shine. But that's going to require you to come into truth because it's only the truth that you can see. Remember that if you want to operate in fear, it's the dark. But when we talk about vitamin D and living your best life, it's all about seeking out the truth. And the truth of the matter is, is that you're not comfortable and things aren't as good as you are trying to make them seem. How? I'm only going to answer with your uh, statement. I feel unfulfilled and alone. So I want you to make the decision to see yourself for who you are and then have the courage to step out of it and show up for the people that love you, okay? Because if you're feeling alone and she's telling you, I can't communicate, imagine how she feels. Thank you for loving on you. Thank you for being vulnerable. All right, let's go to the next one. Subject, don't really want to meet my biological dad. Can't tell my sister. Hey, Dawn, I'm a 20-year-old woman living in Omaha. My mom left my biological father when I was two and she was 25. She has been with my stepdad now for about 17 years. My biological dad had many kids with different women, so many that we don't know how many siblings there are. I have an older half-sister, about 29, and an older half-brother, about 32, 33. There's also two younger siblings who are a couple months apart. I know. Two years ago, I got to meet my oldest sister for the first time along with her daughter. We got along well. It was a bit strange knowing that we were sisters but never had met before, especially since my mom helped raise her and our older brother for about five years until she left our biological dad. I met my younger siblings briefly two years ago. The brother wasn't too interested, but me and my younger sister got along great. Now, after all this time, my biological dad wants to come back into my life, and I don't know how I really feel about it. He messaged us all on Facebook looking to set up some sort of meeting or something, and I just don't know if I can do it. The worst part is that my sister is open to it, and I kind of feel like it will hurt our relationship if I tell her. I don't want to talk to him. Any advice on what I should do? I will say this before I say anything. Follow your truth. No one can tell you how you should feel in your relationship with your father, your sister, or yourself. But here's what I would say. These are the questions I would ask myself. Why are you upset with your father? Why don't you want to meet him? I have to ask that because this hesitancy, restraint, it's tension. You hear what I'm saying? And we talk about stress, we talk about anxiety, when we talk a lot, of, a lot about ailments, you realize it's tension. And that's why when people say relax and just be, it's only because you can breathe. There's a lot of tension because this is restricting you from doing something that could be natural. It's forcing you to pivot rather than to walk freely. And no one is here to judge. You know, like I said before, you need to make sure that you are 
living the life that you want to live. But my only question or my only exclamation, my point is to ensure that you are allowing yourself to be free. So this is what I say. One, if anything, be free enough to speak your truth. And that means even to your sister about not wanting to be around your dad. See, remember when I said in the previous letter, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. And one of the things that we have to realize and establish in a relationship is all about communication. You know what that feels like to be left out of communication. Let me go back. You just said, and, and it, was, it was the way it was written that I can tell that there was probably an awkward moment. You said that you had just met one of your sisters and your mom had helped raise her. But you just met her. I can imagine that's some type of strain. And you see how that broke down and that communication affected you? You see how that broke down communication of how you don't know all of your siblings, all these people who are an extension of you. There's no source of communication, but you got to start that with yourself. Okay? Number two, go see your dad and see who this man is that puts that bad taste in your mouth. Why did I say bad taste? You did not say anything uh, bad about your dad or speak anything negative. But what you said was, is that you didn't want to see him. He is an extension of you. Now, see, remember I talked about and I said there was a breakdown in communication, as you can see, of not knowing your dad, not realizing that your mom raised a sister whom you just met only a few years ago and you are in your 20s. Now your dad is stepping up trying to do communication. Now, we are not responsible for the things that happened to us as a child, but as an adult, we are responsible for the repair and the healing that we do for ourselves. So what say you? What's going on? Are you at least ready to communicate with yourself? Because there is some healing that needs to be done. And you need to figure out why this mountain, the same mountain that I spoke about before, is in front of you. And it makes you want to turn around. It's time for you to get on the other side of that. It's time for you to see what life looks like on the other side of the unknown the unknown of the other pieces that make you who you are, the unknown that makes your bloodline, perhaps even the unknown of not knowing why you don't want to know your father. And it's okay. But remember, we fear what we do not see. We fear what we do not know. Rest assured, when you have truth, you will see the light. Maybe there's an understanding or maybe there's a reason why you do what you do, why certain things are attracting your life. Wouldn't you like to see? Sure. The light might be bright. You might have to put some sunglasses on. Yeah, you might have to put some sunblocks on, but at least you can see the way. And when you talk about vitamin D once again, we're talking about living your best life. And I want that for you. Hence, that's why I'm so passionate and intense about it because there are many times in life where we can choose to go on the other side, but when are you going to choose to show up and allow your truth to echo? Because now you are being authentic. And just like there's this book, it's called The Four Agreements. It's about being impeccable with your word. Well, how can you be impeccable with your word if you don't even know the word it is that you're saying? What are you saying? More importantly, what do you want? If anything, what I hear beyond the notion of why you don't want to go see your father right now, why are you afraid to speak your truth? Why are you afraid to live in your truth? Your truth is what grounds you. Your truth is what nourishes you. Your truth is what sustains you. So no matter where the wind blows or how the rainfall pours, You can still stand. You can still grow. You still have the ability to change and you still have the ability to bear fruit. Whether it be with child, whether it be with creation, but it's the fact that you're exuding, exhibiting life. I want you to live. Speak your truth. Get the confidence to yourself and say that to your sister. She may have a word and maybe this whole breakdown in communication that seems to have been the foundation of your life can make change. Change for the better good. So if there's any advice that I would say for you to do, figure out what's stopping you, whether it be from communicating with your sister, either communicating with yourself, or 
figuring why you don't want to have this communication with your dad. Okay? Thank you. All right, let's go to the next one. Subject, how do I get back on track? Dear Dawn, as background, I'm 32. And I feel like in the past five years, I lost all of my ability to try to better myself. It's hard enough going to work every day. And I feel like at the end of the day, I just want to relax and do something low impact like playing video games or smoking weed. At the end of the day, I genuinely feel like I have no energy, but I hate what I'm becoming. I feel like a waste of space. What makes it worse is that I'm dating someone really special. They do dance, they're amazing cook, and they draw super well. I feel like I add nothing to the relationship, even though she reassures me constantly. I really want to get really good at something to impress her, but I don't feel like I have the energy or financial ability to pick up a new hobby. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Any answers or advice are appreciated. Thank you for writing in. You know, I read this and it's admirable how you were able to step in your truth and be authentically honest with yourself. So I wonder, are you depressed? And I don't say that trying to be funny. I'm just saying that literally because you sound like you're mustering everything up just to function. And whether it's diagnosed with being depressed, have you went to go talk to somebody? Have you? You said you genuinely do not have any energy. Now, just like if we're not feeling well, might cough, might have a fever, you go in for a checkup. But because you said you can't even muster up the energy and, and, and truly engaging in low vibrational activities, whether that be playing video games and smoking weed, you said you feel like you're a waste of space. You, that's like you're saying a, ch- a chair has more purpose in a space than you do. Now, you say you're dating someone special. Well, show up for them. You're talking about finding ways to impress somebody else. You, the way you impress somebody else is you show up being your authentic and best self. Show up as the person that they fell in love with. You owe that to them and you owe that to yourself. Because you have to be good for yourself to give to others. That's what I've said before. Remember, when we are exuding our light, we are pouring from overflow. A light doesn't need another light to shine. A light just shines, no matter the darkness. You know, I coined myself uh, many years ago as the life bank account expert. Hence, that's why I have the notion of saying that you are your greatest asset. And it's because people need to realize what's the most valuable thing in their life. Well, it's self. And we realize that we're not perfect. That means we're not riding or walking or running in a straight line all the time. It's a juggle. Sometimes you're going to be depositing so much. Sometimes you're going to withdraw things. But the only time and when it's a negative effect, if it's one extreme to the other. Because just like any day, it's not sunshine 24-7. The sun does not stay in the same spot. Heck, you as a person ages. That means things must move on. Things must grow. And as talking about what it means to balance, you got to realize is that that balance is sometimes a bounce back. Well, if you're so used to being in the back, how are you going to bounce from that? Sometimes getting the support we need is seeking out the extra support and help and understanding that we don't have it all. Hence, that's probably why you're in a relationship thinking about it. You're in a relationship because you want somebody to further enhance who you are. So if you want to go see a doctor to further enhance how your health is being, if you are literally feeling drained to the bone where you are crawling out of bed, something needs to be assessed. And because you love yourself, and I know you do, I don't care what you say, you don't like feeling the way you did because if that were the case, you wouldn't be writing me. But because you feel that way for yourself, it's time for you to show up for yourself. And it's time for you to love on yourself. So getting back on track is all about tuning in. I mean, think about it. Back in the day, before we actually could push a button to go to a certain radio dial, you had to tune in. Technology is new, but we ain't. So I'm challenging you to tune in. And whether you have to go see somebody to help you get your adjustments together, to make sure your antennas are aligned up appropriately so that you can receive who you are, do what you got to do. Better yourself because you got somebody special. Somebody that has art that wants to bring life and to love on you. And you want to give. You know, they say love is not all about what you can take. It's all about what you can give. 
And you don't want to constantly be on the receiving end. You say she's an amazing cook. She can draw. You know, she makes you feel good. She constantly builds up your confidence. And then you have nothing to give on her. So then what happens? That, that breaks down. We're, in the, we're, we're pairing now. So get back on track by tuning in. And like Lauren Hill, she said it. How you going to win when you ain't right with them? Come again. All right, going on to the next letter. Subject, getting out of a field I hate. Hi, 35-year-old listener here from the U.S., but studying abroad in the U.K. I'm currently in my third year of graduate school studying engineering, and I absolutely hate it. But I put a lot of time into it. And after an unsuccessful stint as a government contractor, I'm not really keen on the private sector. My issue is the work is interesting, but everyone I've met in the field is boring or just not that great a person. I never considered whether liking people I worked with would matter so much, but the idea of being around these folks for the rest of my life makes me want to puke. Should I just quit and join the Peace Corps? Maybe not that drastic, but make a plan to move forward. Yes, absolutely move forward. Move forward with your environment. Move forward with yourself. You said that your work is interesting. So do it for the work and create a different environment for yourself. Don't let anyone displace you. See, that's the sense when you know self and you walk into your authority, you realize the control you have on your life how you're able to build the life that you want. But once you get in a situation when you allow fear or something outside of you, remember outside of you dictate what you're doing, that's when I think there's a problem. So allowing a certain person or persons displace you, ain't nobody got time for that. It's time for you to live your best life. Live your wildest dreams. Rihanna said it. Live your life. Oh, (laughs) no, really go out there and live. And if it's not there, go somewhere else and find it. It's not like you're decrepit and this is the last resort for you. No, you still got breath in your lungs and you're willing and able. So if it's not this, go on to something else. Now, if you have a situation where you're feeling like, oh, um, this field is no longer suiting for me. Engineering is what I don't want to be a part. Then step out of it. But don't just step out of it for the people. Stay true to yourself. Okay. All right. All right. Next letter. Subject, midlife crisis. Oh, gosh. Dear Dawn, I'm 46 and I'm having a bit of a midlife crisis. I love drawing. When I was younger, I picked it up as my major in community college. I was in one of my art classes when my teacher was talking about our motivation and whether or not we truly wanted to pursue a career in illustration. This got me thinking whether or not I truly want to make it my career. Ultimately, I decided no. I'm a simple guy. It doesn't take much to make me happy. I draw the things I want to whenever I want and feel good about it, even if it does have a lot of issues. Since I was a kid, I never liked the idea of people telling me when and how I should make something and when it's expected to me to be done. I work on my own time and I have my own motivations. I start landscaping business with some money I got through an inheritance. And since then, I built up a comfortable life. But now I'm looking at the opportunity to retire early and I'm wondering what should I do with my spare time? Should I go back to school and take up illustration? I feel like I get a lot of satisfaction from making a yard look presentable and having my employees do the same. But now as I look forward, I wonder I should go back to my old love. I'm sure you're wondering what the issue is. My wife doesn't want me to sit up in the house, so I have to build a studio on top of going to school. It starts to get pricey. I'm in a good spot, but I'm wondering if following my heart will endanger that. I could wait and say, but then what if the passion passes and I end up regretting it? What are your thoughts? You got money, right? You can retire early, right? You better invest in your dreams and stop playing with me. I don't know if it was just the stubbornness or whatever the reason of why you chose to, you lose your love. But when it comes back, you'll know. And it came back to you. That's how you know it's real. It's not a foolish thing. You said that you're so comfortable. If you're so comfortable, why are you concerned about money? Not in a situation of which you're going to enjoy. Not in a situation where you're going to get lost in yourself. Not in a situation where otherwise you would need other means to escape that would cost money. But hence, you can just draw with the gift of your own hand. You say you're comfortable, but are you really comfortable? I've built up a comfortable life. Have you? Because 
Comfortability means doing what makes us happy. And also, you realize that even when people who are happy and saying they're comfortable, it's truly allowing them to be comfortable being uncomfortable. See, and what's going to make your truly uncomfortableness is going to be stepping out and taking a chance. Well, here's the thing. You said something about, should I go back to my old love? Well, what is love? Love is about taking down your inhibitions. It's about being vulnerable. It's about being authentic. It's about being scared. Love is about taking a chance. Are you open enough to take a chance on you? See, love can breathe life into you and it also can knock the wind out of you. You can't wait to live. You have to live now. You have to go back to what identified as you because loving you is good. It may not be easy, but it's good. And if it's something that you enjoy, which you have all this free time, why wouldn't you take a chance on it? You took a chance on taking your family inheritance and making this a landscaping business. You telling me that now you got a chance on something that you could see, something that you love, something that you have declared to be your first love. You don't want to take a chance on love? Who doesn't want to take a chance on feeling good? I don't know about you. I understand that life has its tribulations, but I'm here because I want to feel good on purpose and for what purpose? You got to follow your dreams. Get out this funk that didn't hit the fan. Get on your feet because it's time to stand. Come on, dance and get with me. (laughs) You got me acting out on here, but no, really. Go out there and do your drawing and take a chance on it. Worst thing can happen if you have to take a minute to slow down or as Karen Malone would say, aka righteous soul, just take a pause on it. Here's the thing, we get so caught up in trying to plan and saying things have to be perfect and how it has to work out. Just operate in the motion. The wind doesn't give permission to blow and who it's going to blow over. It's up to that person not to get knocked down. So don't get knocked down. And if you get knocked down, get up. Les Brown said it, if you can look up, you can get up. Hard times don't last always, but good people do. And good people are good because they are good for feeling love. They love on themselves and they love each other. So go ahead on love on yourself and take a chance on yourself. You deserve that. Dreams are living inside of you. Let them breathe. You are. Okay, that's it. On to the next. Here's to the last letter. Subject, girl, what do I do? So I'm 28. I live in Georgia. I'm thankful for where I am in life, but I'm damn near miserable. I just lost my boyfriend because he wanted to move to Cameroon. I'll say I'm thankful that I had parents to push me to finish college. And I'm thankful that I was able to land a decent entry level job out of college. But I have absolutely no passion for what I'm doing. And it's making me depressed. I work in accounting and while I'm good with numbers and organizing, it just burns a hole in my skull with how boring it is. It's obvious a lot of my peers at my job who do the same thing I do have more passion for it and they perform much better. I constantly live in a state of anxiety and stress because I don't feel like I'm doing my job well. And I have trouble motivating myself to do better because I simply hate what I do. I truly believe I was meant for more than a boring nine to five. I've been at my current job for five years and just feel like I need to start over. It's just tough because I've had all this experience in this field that I hate. I feel like for me to advance in my life, my next step would be to find a better paying job in my field. But I can't imagine doing this for the rest of my life. How do I begin the process of creating the life I will enjoy? You better wave the SOS flag because you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Here's the thing. It's one thing to walk in a situation and not know what's on the other side of the door. But then it takes a fool to know what's on the other side of the door and still choose to walk through the door knowing that they don't want what's on the other side. You hear it biblically, write the vision and make it plain. Hey, you asked Meek Mill. He said, if you want it, you got to see it with a clear-eyed view. Girl, what do you want? Hmm? What do you want? Now, you may not have all the answers right now, but I think it's probably going to be some time that you need to start brainstorming. Write out the desires of your heart, okay? You're in a beautiful moment right now. There's a lot of things transitioning. You have nothing holding you back. And sometimes when we are in this state, we're rising, you know, because we're allowing ourselves to go to the next level. And what you got to realize is that on this uh, ascension, you know, this 
rising, a rival of upwards. There's a lot of wind. You're more susceptible to get knocked over for things to sway you because now you're expanding. You're opposing gravity. But see, here's the thing, like I've been saying, staying true to self and what it is that you want, you can't go wrong. If everything is operating in the greater good for you because you believe that because you actually see better for yourself, you actually see that you want more. You can see what it is that you don't want. You know what it's like to be in a state of not happiness, a state of anxiety, a state of stress, a state of knowing that you are meant for more. Why wouldn't you do it? Girl, how you going to live with no passion? Passion is is the fire inside of you. Well, if we want to take it back, remember this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Are you going to let your light shine? Are you going to let your light shine so that you can see the truth in the way? Are you going to let your light shine so that you can live your best life? Are you going to let your light shine so that your vitamin D levels are up to par? Are you ready to live? Period. Period. Why are you choosing or why would one choose to sit there to drink poison and die? You don't even enjoy the taste. Like for me, weight is something that I've always battled. And understanding the relationship with food and how I want to exchange with it, right? Understanding with my truth. Okay, I can say this. Oh my gosh, I want to lose weight. I'm about to bust open that cheeseburger and them fries or them chips or peanut M&Ms. Oh my God, which I love. But understanding it's the taste that it may not ultimately be good, but you don't even like the way this smells. You don't like the way it looks. You don't like the way it sounds. But yet you would choose to walk in the door because you said, oh, if I'm going to think about expanding my career, I think about getting a higher paid job, a higher level of misery. What, you going to sit in the fire and then turn up the temperature? Come on. And I say it like that because I want that for you. I want the best for you. And this ain't it. Now, it's going to require you to take some time. And like I said, write the vision and make it plain. But you got to spend some time with yourself and figure out what you don't want. But here's the beauty of it. Walk in the gratitude of knowing the blank canvas in which you can write out the life that you want. How beautiful is that? It may be scary because you have this full blank page, but it's a blank page that you can add all your colors, all your stripes, all your stickers, all the things that are imaginative to you. There's nothing holding you back. Are you going to choose to spread your wings and soar and go to new heights? I'm telling you, the wind will shake you. But if you are firm in who you are and your truth, that wind will get underneath your wings and you'll soar. You feel me? Are you ready to soar? Write it down. Write the vision and make it plain. If you want it, you got to see it with a clear eye of you. It's time for you to see it. It's time for you to be it. It's time for you to breathe it. So you begin that process with simply um, having a conversation with yourself and really being real about what enjoys you, what excites you. Get out there and try some new stuff. Try some new things. If you have to even start out by minimizing your hours, because I'm sure you just may not want to jump out there. And if you do, that's fine. I did it a couple of times and I've been okay because I followed Dawn's truth. And as long as you follow the truth, that means you're following the light. And that's the way. You dig? Okay. So girl, that's what I think you need to do. Girl, I think you need to look at this opportunity and say, ooh, I'm popping. I have so many opportunities. I don't have any baggage holding me back except for myself. You finish college, you can finish this next feat of your life. And like you said, it's one thing to say, oh, you want to do more. And it's another thing to know that you're meant for more and not doing it. You got greatness inside of you. Now tap in it, to it. That's what we're talking about, vitamin D. That's what we mean about living your best life, girl. Come on. Do me clean. Do you clean. And be seen. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it for the advice letters. You know, I have a ball um, reading the letters that you walk in. And it makes me feel good because even when I'm reading them, I start to realize different things that are uncovering with myself. And it puts a different perspective. And I think there's also a level in inclusion because people are listening and they're like, oh, wow, that's me too. Or something beautiful when you can, quote unquote, eat the meat and spit out the bones. When talking about someone else's experience and to know that someone was so bold and vulnerable enough to share it, that somebody else can eat to it. And I feel like that's what we are meant to do on this life. We all have light with inside of us. We all contain our various levels of vitamin D, but 
Let's start and walk in the mode of edifying each other. Let's be a reflection of that. Let's be vulnerable and let's be open. Let's be in that love state where we can say, I'm imperfectly perfect. And I'm coming through with my truth because my truth is where I reside. And if anything came off harsh, you know it's out of love. And you know that's the Aryan quality. But it's all about living your best life. And another thing Karen talked about, when she talked about shedding light, hey, at night you cut the lights off, but joy comes in the morning. And everybody wants to wake up to see a new day. It may blind you for a second, but take a minute and pause. Adjust your eyes so that you can see clearly. It's nothing like being put in the realm of confusion. We're seeking clarity and we're seeking truth. And if you heard these letters and you're like, man, I would love to hear Dawn's advice or take on something, email them to me. Ian will get right to them and you can send them to vitamin D at dawndayspeaks.com. That's vitamin D at dawndayspeaks.com. Now, if the podcast and waiting every Monday is not enough so that you can get you some Dawn Day, aka vitamin D in your life, I want to encourage you to follow me on all social media. Okay? I'm Dawn Day Speaks on all of it. It's Dawn D A I speaks on all social media. So hit me up. Let's talk. Heck, even if you want to be a guest, we can talk about that too. Because everybody deserves to have a little light in their life. Well, that's all I got for you on this episode. So until next time, always remember, you are your greatest asset.